If you have a 3D printer, there's a very good possibility that you know what this is. This is a linear bearing that uses recirculating bearing balls in order to provide motion in a way that doesn't have much friction and also doesn't really, I mean, it's awesome. It moves in a straight line and it doesn't really have any backlash in any direction except the way it's supposed to move. So today I'm gonna to show some things that I've designed in Fusion 360 that use the same concept of, of recirculating BBs to provide motion for things that you can 3D print. Hey guys, and welcome to Geared On For What. Today, I have a special treat for you. Today, I have a 3D printed, non-linear, linear bearing thing. And I have a 3D printed ball screw. It actually works. So this was actually inspired by a picture I saw on the 3D printing group on Facebook. And uh, I came up with this idea because I saw at at's foot, you know, at at from Star Wars, just to clarify in case I'm saying that wrong. Uh, I saw at at's ankle has actually about a, a semicircle like this, and the top of at at attaches, and it seems to move like this. And so it's like uh, it's like a hinge, but it moves off axis. So I thought that was really interesting, and I wanted to find a way to accomplish that with 3D printing in a way that it wouldn't be just plastic friction rubbing on plastic. So what I came up with was I came up with a bearing that's based on BBs recirculating inside a channel inside it. So as you see, as I push BBs into here, there's actually another one that comes down from the top every time. So this one that I showed you right here, this is actually my very first model of it. And it was, you know, uh, first time too tight, second time all right that kind of thing. I ended up remaking it. And this is what I came up with the second time. And now I can actually mount a wheel in here. And what's interesting about this is I can squeeze as hard as I can and pull these two plates tight together. And this thing still spins really easy. And even though it's kind of loud, I think it's a really effective means for uh, like if you ever needed to do something like this, like you don't have to have a full circle, you can do this with a semicircle. Um, I've seen guys trying to set up a camera to travel along on a display in a semicircle, and you could accomplish that with this exact same setup by just changing the size of the circle and changing a few other little parameters on it, and you could have that. It would be like a linear bearing that doesn't have to travel in a straight line. The only thing is that the diameter of the circle has to be constant, at, at least pretty darn close to constant throughout the whole track that this part rides on. So uh, there's that. But anyways, I'll take this one apart to you, for you and show you what's inside it. I made a slight miscalculation when I designed this thing and that was uh, what kind of hardware I had on hand and I apparently didn't have anything long enough to fit through these holes that was also small enough to fit inside the holes. So I ended up just sticking a bolt in there that happened to kind of thread in the plastic. So here's what's inside here. It's basically the exact same thing as, I'm trying, not to, I'm trying not to get bearings all over the table. So this is what is supporting this wheel here. It's just recirculating bearings once again. Uh, so as you can see, I can push bearings in and they recirculate down, under, through, and then back up this side. Um, here's what it looks like in Fusion 360. So that was my first venture with recirculating bearings. And then I realized that there's actually something really common that uses recirculating bearings, and that's called a ball screw. So I think most of us can say that we're familiar with what a machine screw is, or a bolt and a nut. A machine screw is just a threaded apparatus, and it's got a matching nut that's threaded with the same threads on the inside, and there's a little bit of clearance provided. Uh, the problem with a machine screw is that there's a little bit of slop this way and there's always a little bit of slop this way and if you try to make these parts fit perfectly to where that slop isn't there um, the friction to turn it on becomes too much and as you're tightening it down it gets harder to turn because the friction increases so the backlash on this assembly and the frictions increasing as the pressure increases on the threads are all reasons that the ball screw was invented this is a device that can be uh, well, it's usually manufactured out of metal, but I 3D printed this one and it's basically designed to be like a machine screw Except it uses ball bearings to contact instead of threads. Now 
the problem with this is this is that normally your ball bearings would just go everywhere you know you put them in this end and then they come out that end so this has a recirculating tube in it it actually picks up the bearings that get close to this end and puts them back on this end and I, I'll show you that in Fusion 360 here uh, you see I've got a cutout for that that pathway that goes picks up the ball bearings here and puts them back on this side now as you'll see with this design of it this is really the same concept uh, these two both are is that I've got a little thing that sticks out and actually hooks the ball bearings and pulls them down and pulls them into that channel well my first idea of building this I forgot to do that and let me show you why that matters so this is also going to be a guide on how you assemble this thing uh, so you take the outer nut which just has threads in it or which just has a helical coil cut in it and then the inner nut which also has a helical coil cut in it and put them together and take your, your uh, BBs fill it full let the rest of them just go on the floor because uh, before you start you should really have a magnet actually that would be a smart idea um, and then you just twist this in there try to get it straight twist it back and forth a whole bunch try to get all the bearings to go inside their channel right and then you have yourself a ball screw so the problem with this first design is that I didn't have anything that would prevent the BBs from trying to get lodged when they went back into the channel. So I did a small update to the design, which is, oh, there's BBs everywhere. <laughs> I did a small update to the design where I took and I added this little device. Can you see that? You didn't answer me. I don't know if you can see it or not. I don't have my cameraman here today. You guys are going to have to help me out. Oh yeah, that's right. No feedback. Anyways, so this little device right here basically grabs the bearings and pulls them back into this channel, which you can see part of right here where it wraps around. And I'll show you that in Fusion 362. Um, so this was the improvement to this. Interestingly enough is the addition of that. It, it must be rubbing somewhere. It makes it so that the thing no longer really wants to screw itself down on the rod anymore. But either way, this assembly has very little backlash. And one way I accomplished that is uh, you'd think I would have used the same coil to cut the threads on here as I did in this nut, but I actually didn't. What I did was I made the coil the same pitch and then I stretched it out by three millimeters. And that way this assembly doesn't have really any backlash that I can tell at all. And the nut doesn't really wiggle around. It, it does a little bit, but not too much. But the backlash on this thing is impressive. I mean, there's almost none. Uh, there is essentially none that I can tell because it's bound up just a little bit since I stretched out this rod in the CAD program. So anyways, that's about all I have for you guys today. If you're interested, all of these designs can be found on Thingiverse. I'll be uploading them just as I upload the video. Hey, by the way, I only have like three followers on Twitter. Would you guys go over to Twitter and follow me so I can make some posts on there and feel like somebody's listening? <laughs> That'd be great. Hey, thanks for watching.